Good evening. Welcome to Columbia Heights Public Schools Independent School District 13 School Board Meeting for Tuesday, February 28, 2017. I'd like to call the meeting to order. If you would, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States Thank you and welcome again. Um, Maddie's not here. She usually reads the roll. Who do we kick that over to? You want to read the roll for me? Did you do the roll call? Please. Samurai? Here. Uh, Lewis? Here. Larkin? Here. Bueller? Here. <laughs> Palmer? Here. And uh, Superintendent Kathy Kelly here uh, with uh, Severson uh, being absent. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, our mission statement Columbia Heights Public Schools creates worlds of opportunity for every learner in partnership with supportive small town communities by challenging all to discover their talents, unleash their potential, and develop tools for lifelong success. Our core values are community, excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect courage and innovation. And first item up on the agenda tonight is our Highlander highlights and the board will honor the recipients of the Minnesota Scholastic Arts Award from the Columbia Heights Public Schools. And if I would, I just want to give you a little bit of background. Um, the school board is pleased to honor 16 Columbia Heights High School art students for earning a total of 26 Art Educator of Minnesota Gold Key Silver Key and honorable mentions in the 2017 Minnesota Scholastic Arts Awards. This year's competition had 4,300 entries with students judged in 13 different categories. Our students earned eight gold key, three silver key, and 15 honorable mentions. All of the gold key winners work um, are now competing at the national level. And I guess what I'd like to do, I'll put you guys on the spot, um, have uh, Dane Hodges and Sarah Honeywell. If you want to just come up to the mic for a second and just kind of talk about the process just briefly for what the kids go through um, to get to this point. Is Dan here too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dan, you can come up too. Come on up. I'm Dane Hodges. I teach AP Studio Art, Advanced Drawing and Painting, and Ceramics at the high school. Sarah Honeywell, I teach photography and media arts and basic design at the high school. How do you know this guy? Good evening, board chair Larkin, members of the school board, Superintendent Kelly. Um, tonight, um, our staff is going to speak on behalf of our students and the portrait work that they have presented as the Scholastic Awards. And you can see as the PowerPoint is going through, it's um, quite impressive. So just to give you kind of a brief idea of what the students go through when they're going through the process of judging, um, they're all making artwork through the year. And then we kind of try and hook up with the students to try and get them to uh, pick out the pieces that are their strongest. And then if they would like to submit, we allow them to submit their pieces. And then once they're submitted, they go up against about 4,500 other pieces. And out of those 4,500, only about 35% actually win any awards. And they go through three rounds of judging. So the judges look at all the pieces one time around, and they just say yay or nay. Then in the second round of judging, they go yay or nay again. And the students that get nayed get the honorable mention. And then everybody else moves back up to the silver key round. And then everybody that gets yayed then moves up to the gold key round. And then all those gold key Recipients then go on to the national level um, to possibly win more cash prizes and further awards. So it's pretty amazing that we even get honorable mentions. So I'm super proud of all the students. They work really hard throughout the years to make it to this point because it's not one little chunk of their time. You know, it's years of work that gets them there. So. Yeah, I can second all that and just also I want to just comment on the amount of experimentation that goes into it when they find something they like. They remix it and redo it and reapproach it. That's a lot of what we do in photography is they kind of find something that they're really into and interested in and what they're good at. And they just keep reinventing that same process until they get 
that magic spot where, and that's a lot what we see on the screen is that's a lot of toil <laughs> before they get to that result. Okay. And last, it wouldn't be possible without the great minds of the kids, but thank you guys for the continued support for the arts. Um, it's something that we value uh, immensely, the fact that we all have jobs here and can teach these kids art, um, that really stems from you guys, so thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome, and I, you need to keep up the good work, kids, because this is like the funnest part of our meetings, so we want, <laughs> the, we want to be able to be recognizing these uh, these tremendous successes. So um, we're, I personally am very proud of you. What I'd like to do, if I could, I'll have Dan and Sarah, if you want to come up with uh, the certificates, we're going to ask you kids to come up. I'll read one of the certificates, and then we'll ask you to come up one at a time. And I think what we'll do, if Casey's OK with it, where's my camera guy? Um, you OK if we do the pictures with the teachers, Casey, up here? Is that okay? Are you OK if we do the, your picture individual ones with the, sure. with the teachers? OK, yep. so we'll have them come up. And uh, just so you know, kids, when you're all done, you do not have to stay for the whole meeting um, unless you want to. But if you do want to, we're going to ask that you kind of gather out in the, the lobby area so they can get a group picture as well. So um, just keep that in the back of your mind as you're sneaking out. So uh, Dan and Sarah, if you guys want to come up with the certificates and we'll recognize the kids that are here. Okay, I'll go ahead and read the certificate, and they all say the same thing. Um, the first one, we're going to have Kian Lewis come up. Uh, Columbia Heights High School is, recognizing, is recognized for receiving an honorable mention at the Scholastic Art Show. Come on up, Kian. Come up here. Take that. <laughs> Part of the fun of this is embarrassing the kids that I know, so just <laughs> speaking of which, Johnny Castro, uh, also recognized, he actually received two gold keys at the Scholastic Art Show. Kira Greenfield is recognized for receiving a gold key and two honorable mentions at the Scholastic Art Show. Christine Erickson is recognized for receiving two honorable mentions at the Scholastic Art Show. the next person. Erna Osmanovic. Uh, she rece received a uh, gold key and honorable mention at the Scholastic Art Show. Carmela Demir, uh, recognized for receiving an honorable mention at the Scholastic Art Show. She hiding back there? There she is. And just in the nick of time, Adler Burton um, <laughs> is recognized for receiving five honorable mentions at the Scholastic Art Show. Come on up, Adler. So also something really cool with Adler, uh, he also participated in the Sister City show, 
Um, some of the judges were really intrigued by his work, so suggested that he submit it to a local gallery called the Third Place Gallery. So he's actually going to have his photograph in a legitimate gallery here in the cities. Uh, the opening's on Friday. It starts at 3 p.m. and goes off until 8.30 at night. So he'll have a piece for sale just on display. So good job for that too, Adler. That's the third place gallery, in case you have any questions. Don't run away. Hey, other students, you guys can sit down. Actually, you don't want me to we'll shake their hands. Hang on a second. Um, other students that were recognized that are not here this evening, Nathan Smolka, he is recognized for receiving three gold keys and an honorable mention. Uh, Whitney Meyer, uh, recognized for receiving a gold key and two silver keys at the Scholastic Art Show. Marnie Borders is recognized for receiving an honorable mention at the Scholastic Art Show. And Michelle Johnson is recognized for receiving an honorable mention um, at the Scholastic Art Show. Casey, can I get it? Congratulations again to everybody. All right, so much for the fun stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and move forward. Next up on is the agenda approval, adjustments, announcements, and correspondence. First up is approval of the agenda. If I could get a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Molly? Second. Is that you, Lauren? Lauren? Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? Motion carries. Announcements, March 13th through the 17th, no school spring break. March 21st at 5 p.m., school board listening session. Uh, also March 21st at 5.30, school board work session. March 28th at 7 p.m., regular school board meeting. And April 11th, Tuesday, 7 p.m., regular school board meeting. Uh, last up is correspondence. Superintendent Kelly, any correspondence this evening? Mr. Chair and members, there's no correspondence to this evening. Okay, thank you. Communications to the board. Citizens and employee representatives at this time, any citizen or employee may briefly address the school board. The board will listen to brief remarks, ask clarifying questions, and if desired, request that administration follow up. The board will not take action at this meeting on requests presented at this time. Anyone here? Okay. Next up is the consent agenda. Um, included in the consent agenda is the personnel report. Uh, again, could I get a motion to move that forward, please? So moved. Laura? Second. Holla, thank you. <coughs> Discussion? Hearing none, all, in favor say, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Next up is the uh, acknowledgement of contributions. It's a resolution. And if I could look for a, f a motion and a second to move it forward, I'll read it and then we'll have discussion. So looking for a motion. So moved. Holla. Second. Lauren. Okay. Now let me just dig it out here. Sorry, I thought I had it in front of me here. We'll just go. I'll just go to the on here. Don's bringing. I got it right here. I got it right here, Don. It's fine. Okay. One second. Thank 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, acknowledgement of contributions. Whereas Minnesota Statute 123B.02 permits school boards to receive for the benefits of the district, bequest will donations or gifts for any proper purpose and apply the same to the purpose designated. In that behalf, the board may act as trustee of any trust created for the benefit of the district and for the benefit of pupils thereof. Therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Columbia Heights Public Schools Independent School District Number 13 that the school board accepts with appreciation the contributions detailed in the background in the amount of $9,960.79. In the detailed background, a donation of $700 was made to North Park Elementary by Scholarship America for second grade field trip. A donation of $250 was made to North Park Elementary by Columbia Heights Lions Club for student needs. Donation of $105 was made to Valley View Elementary by Lisa Murrah for student needs. A donation of $30 was made to Valley View Elementary by Carissa Gang for student needs. A donation of $70 was made to Valley View Elementary by Kyle Potorisha for student needs. A donation of $400 was made to Columbia Heights Activities by Parsons Electric LLC for the uh, Columbia Academy Robotics teams. <coughs> Donation of $100 was made to Columbia Heights Public Schools by John, Janet and John Filter in support of public education. A donation of $1,000 was made to Columbia Heights Public Schools by Hallberg Engineering for high school study seminar. A donation of $850 was made to Columbia Heights Public Schools by Sodexo for high the high school study seminar. A donation of $100 was made to Columbia Heights Public Schools by MLA Architects Inc. for high school study seminar. A donation of $200 was made to Columbia Heights Public Schools by Alex Jakes for high school study seminar. A donation of $100.79 was made to Columbia Heights Public Schools by Noodles and Company for high school study seminar. A donation of $250 was made to North Park Elementary by Columbia Heights Lions Club for hats and mittens. A donation of $700 was made to North Park Elementary by Scholarship America for, second grade, for the second grade field trip. A donation of $500 was made to Valley View Elementary by Northeast State Bank for student needs. And then the following donations were made to the Columbia Heights High School Scholarship Program. Keith and Janice Olson, $25. Luann Riestad, $20. Zachary Prax, $100. Nick Morales, $2,700. And Dial Westman, $2,000. Value and Kind, donation of hats and gloves to Valley View Elementary by St. Phillips Lutheran for, base, for winter basic needs. Estimated value of $160. Total fiscal year for 2016-2017 monetary contributions to date, $56,142.54. Wow, okay. Um, so we have a motion on the table, motion and second, any discussion? Hearing none, Laura, if you would do a roll call vote, please. The Samurai. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Larkin. Aye. Mueller. Aye. Palmer. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Very generous. Okay, next up is discussion reports and information items. Reports for members of the board. Board members will report on board activities since the last regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Lorian, would you mind starting tonight? Did you say Lorian? Lorian, I'm oh, sorry. Yes, yes. please. I'm um, I uh, had a meeting with Superintendent Kelly and former Director Hallaby and Director Holmgren regarding the uh, special education cross-subsidy and overall special education. Um, I also met with uh, Director Stenvik and Superintendent Kelly regarding uh, communication and curriculum to respond to a parent concern. Um, I attended the work session um, and also attended the high school band concert. Okay, thank you. Laura? Um, yeah, I'm just kind of going over everything. I, it's actually been a pretty busy week. Um, I attended the uh, the work session, um, the uh, the special called session. I had a um, lovely breakfast with um, with uh, uh, member Severson, or yeah. and uh, that was that was really nice. It was nice to get a chance have a chance to get to know her. Um, I also had the great honor and um, luck of actually being able to um, help. Uh, with the judging of the junior chefs uh, competition. Um, it was a lot of fun. And uh, they were out there, I mean, cooking. And 
my, my kids can't cook. And I, it, the food was just amazing. And they did such a wonderful job. I, I, I'm glad it's the first annual and we're going to do it again and again and again. So um, <coughs> next time we do it, make sure everybody comes on out there and, and sees the great work, uh, the great, great work that they're doing. It was, it was just an, a, a lot of fun. Um, I also um, <coughs> attended um, the band concert last night. As always, the students, I just, they're so good, and they work so hard, and we're so proud of them. And if you get a chance to get out there and see what they're doing in the, um, in the music program, I highly recommend it. Um, they, they, do us, they do us very proud. Um, I also attended the, um, the chair meeting just prior to this meeting. That's my condensed version. Condensed version, <laughs> thank you. Holla. Yep. So last week I attended the special <coughs> called meeting and the work session, and I met with a few constituents. Thank you. Um, I attended Director Hallaby's farewell gathering, which was very nice. Um, sad to see her go, but I'm excited for the new things moving forward. Um, I had an opportunity to join the Highland fourth graders on a field trip, which was the Vocal Essence Witness Program concert, and that was really exciting. It was a great program for the kids to attend. Um, also attended a varsity boys basketball game and the academic awards night at Columbia Academy, which was also very, very well done. Um, there was a packed gym. I couldn't believe how many families were there. So it was really, it was really exciting. Um, also attended the closed session last week, the work session last week, and had many conversations with parents of students in this district. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I like going last because over here people remind me <laughs> of what I actually did. Um, <laughs> And I also attended Nicole Hallaby's farewell. Um, I was at the closed session, uh, the work session last week. Um, I concur with Laura regarding the band concert. The kids just keep getting better and better, um, which is certainly going to, uh, Mr. Palmer has his work cut out for him. So, um, and I know there's a choir concert next Monday, and I'm sure that uh, the same will be said about the kids. Um, then I attended the chair meeting prior to this meeting here, and that concludes my report. Next up would be the superintendent's report. Do you have one tonight? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair and members. Um, as was already mentioned, we did have um, Nicole Hollaby's celebration of her uh, career and her retirement on Wednesday, February 15th. And I want to thank all of those, especially John Awesome, um, who did a, <laughs> composed a song in Nicole's honor um, to, and made the celebration possible because it was a very sweet and nice event. Um, Dr. Laura McLoon is officially on board as the new director, and um, we're putting her through her paces already. We're delighted um, to have her in that position. Uh, uh, the administrators um, uh, participated in a suspensions, discipline, and immigration issues, uh, staff development training with the school district attorney, Karen Keppel, so we can stay apprised of issues in those areas and refresh in others. Um, I want to thank the boosters for the elementary appreciation night before the boys' basketball game. Um, it's always a special gathering, and we appreciate their ongoing and consistent support. Something about the nice smell of pizza and all that fun stuff, and then um, going up and watching a game together. And Principal DeWitt, who was in the audience tonight, was there as well. And um, wanted to thank elementary principals for coming out and bringing their kids. Uh, the administration continues to meet regarding district staffing and evaluation practices, and the planning for the high school trip to New York City, the New York City Seminar continues. The students are really working very, very hard, and if they hadn't hit you, hit you up for World's Finest Chocolate Bars yet, I'm sure they will. Um, we had a broken water main um, that occurred, thank heavens, over a weekend, and um, that has been repaired, and it was without too much disruption to student and parents' schedules, because it was over a weekend, and we had a choir concert um, that was scheduled for that Sunday, and that was able to go on. It was uh, a combination concert, so that was a, a blessing, really. Um, I, too, along with um, Vice Chair Palmer, had the great pleasure of being a judge at the, uh, uh, the first annual Future Chefs Culinary Competition. I want to say a special thanks to Sodexo because they really sponsored, uh, sponsored it. The, uh, it was so professionally run, and we had second graders cooking on these small little um, stoves, miniature Bunsen burners, I call them, turning out fantastic meals um, or dishes. And um, there was a second grader that would put me to shame in the kitchen, I can tell you that. So we want to congratulate them all. Um, our winner will go on to the next level. 
And um, I want to echo what Vice Chair Palmer said, is that if you haven't gone to this, and it was really my first time ever going to something like this, uh, it's really a sight to behold, because they, they were so enthusiastic, and they knew everything about their recipes and why they created them, because they had to create them, what went in them, what the ingredients did. And they had some family traditions that they shared as well. Uh, Director McLuhan and I attended the 916 Foundation fundraiser on Friday evening, uh, last Friday evening, and that was very well attended, and that money goes to scholarships for our kids, and then it also goes for playgrounds and equipment at some of the other 916 sites. And so um, another great evening there. And then <clears throat> Director Stenvig and I had a more sobering experience um, this week because we had an introductory meeting with a, a compliance officer who's going to come in and do an audit uh, this spring on all of our federal programs. And so they'll be looking at the titles specifically. Um, they will be on site in May. They will be um, out in the buildings. Uh, they will be doing one of our non-public schools. They'll be doing um, uh, elementary and secondary schools. They will be looking at our uh, purchasing system. Uh, there's an entire booklet. And so we're gonna begin preparing for that. We'll keep you apprised of how that's um, percolating out, but we're starting tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, getting ready for that. Uh, administration met uh, last <coughs> night with Local 710 for our, um, non, uh, for our licensed labor management meeting, and one of the topics really is a troubling one from the standpoint of it. We can't seem to know how to solve it at this point, and that is trying to access reserve teachers. And so, I'm just going to say this on television because if anybody is thinking about perhaps coming out, um, and it would it just graduated or wants to do some long-term subbing for us, our HR department is willing to take any and all that would like to work for us in that area because we just can't and we, we're, we're approaching the flu season and it's only going to get worse before it gets better so that that's an issue that we're all working on um, the, an exciting thing is the performing arts team uh, is continues to meet on the development of the theater curriculum and um, I want to thank members of the site team. Uh, Principal Robleski is here. Uh, he was on the curriculum team that went out and, and looked at things as well as members of teaching and learning with Director Stenvig um, in tow and the curriculums and things that we looked at and the, the districts that collaborated with us to show us their programs gave us a really good start. I think it's going to be exciting for the kids. I really do. And so we'll report more out on that later. But I wanted to let you know that is really working very well. Just as the other board members have said around the table, as the superintendent, I did go to the work study, the closed session, the chair meetings. And then I really enjoyed the, the meetings that I had with Lorian and other people that were either texting me or uh, phoning me over the last few weeks. It's been very helpful. And lastly, I would just want to say on camera a belated birthday to both Lorian Mueller and to Molly Marin Lewis because they're just all celebrating our birthdays. So how about a round of applause for these ladies? <laughs> that concludes my report. Hey, thank you very much. Um, happy belated birthday. Uh, next up would be a uh, presentation of the high school video. I believe we have Principal Robleski and Casey. Good evening, Chair Larkin, members of the board, Superintendent Kelly. Um, tonight, uh, we will pre be presenting um, the high school video. And I think the high school video really depicts our mission statement and our core values as you watch it tonight. And I think you can see the passion with our staff and our students. And we really do believe that we are creating college and career ready graduates. So without further ado, let's watch our video. who you are, where you come from, be it through academics or extracurriculars. We have so many things offered here. At Columbia Heights High School, we are committed to preparing college and career ready graduates. We believe that our hard work and dedication is based off our core values of respect, education, attitude, and loyalty. I was a part of College Possible. I've taken AP classes. We were proud to receive the Advanced Placement College Board Small School District of the Year for our students' hard work and academic success. These AP courses are getting me ready. I feel like I can tackle all these challenging courses once I do get into college. Taking these AP classes in AVID makes you 
well prepared for whatever they're going to throw at you. We are passionate about preparing our students for success in college. We have a number of programs that are getting students used to the rigor of college level courses. We offer a large number of AP courses and we partner with the University of Minnesota to implement a curriculum called Ramp Up to Readiness. Students meet once a week in a small group with a teacher advisor where they really assess their readiness for college and determine steps that they need to take to be ready for that next level. Where is the original function increasing and decreasing? Through hard work and dedication, our staff is focused on student success. Teachers here like really support you. Like if you need help, um, all you have to do is ask. And they will go the extra mile to stay after school with you. They've been there for me every step of the way, from freshman year all the way to this final year here. They've always been there just helping me achieve everything I possibly could. We have programs for everyone. You can do anything from band, art, sports, clubs. There's just something that everybody can do. The theater program is amazing because they don't offer just one thing. There's something for everybody. There's a lot of different opportunities that we have with clubs like Link Crew, NHS, and Key Club, all types of varsity athletics. We're so proud of our diversity. There is a welcoming environment, you know, Everyone is welcome no matter what you are, no matter how you are. You don't feel excluded because there's always, there's going to be someone in your school who's going to be there for you. You can walk straight down the hallway and you'll see someone from over 20 different countries in just this high school, alone, just one hallway. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, you'll always feel a part of the community. I love it here at Columbia Heights and all of Columbia Heights is family. I would say like if you come here, we'll embrace you no matter what. We are all proud to be Highlanders. Are you ready to be one? Very nice. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for somebody else to say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, the, the, we keep seeing, you know, the different videos from the different schools and, and they, this, I believe that they certainly highlight what each building is offering our students um, and that's exciting and those are good things that we should be making sure people see out there. So, anybody have any questions or comments? Well done, thank you. Okay, thanks guys, It's excellent. I was just gonna say um, one last thing is like, if, if Member Severson are here tonight and not ill, she would be asking where are these gonna be posted and how are we getting them out? <laughs> <laughs> so um, where, are they going, where are they gonna be posted and how are we getting these videos out? Um, all the videos that we have received so far um, are posted on the school websites. They are being posted on the district website. They are, uh, we've got one that we have to update to Facebook um, they are on the educational television station, and in this particular um, video is showing daily at 212, 703, and 1007. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then we've got some others. I apologize, I didn't bring my notes, but we're getting them out there. Okay, and if you watch them at home, especially on the Facebook, which everybody, a lot of people seem to be, feel free to share them with people. That's the way to get the message out. Yes, we've been monitoring the numbers. I think the high school is somewhere around 700 views so far. Okay. Um, each one is different, but they're getting a lot of views. Good, excellent. Thanks again. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up will be the anchor program update, and I believe Laura's <coughs> coming up for that. And Marsha. And Marsha? Okay, sorry, Marsha. There you are. While they're getting ready, you will find at your desk the anchor um, program manual. We didn't load it into Boardbook. Um, we thought you might want to have a physical copy just to take a look at it, and it's a few pages. So um, as you're looking through that, um, they'll walk through some of it. But I want to say that for a pilot program just starting off, that the manual is quite explicit, and it's a, very, it's a job well done. So thank you for that. Good evening, Chair Larkin, members of the board, Superintendent Kelly. Marsha and I are very excited to be here this evening to talk about the Anchor program that started at the start of the second semester. So um, 
as we go through tonight, again, our mission is to create worlds of opportunity for every learner, and we really believe that by offering this program to in-district students, we are providing those opportunities. Again, here are our core values. We really are focusing on, on community and innovation with this program. So you do have the full program manual. We're really giving more broad strokes tonight because it is um, quite lengthy, and we're trying to save your time this evening. But as far as the rationale of the program when it was presented to you, um, really we've seen an increase in the mental health needs of our students and so we've done a lot of different things within the district to meet students' needs, but we have been placing students in out of district placements so that they can have access to those therapeutic school settings and day treatments. And so with the Anchor program, we've been able to partner with an organization called Nexus Family Solutions where we have um, within our own district District, we have a therapeutic school program so that students can access um, really intensive therapy and then also academic programming through Anchor. So with the mission and core values, the program is located in the high school and so we really wanted to ensure that Anchor being its own school or program was mirroring the high school's core values. So again, we're mirroring the district's mission and core values, but then still holding on to that, keeping it real with the respect to education, attitude, and loyalty. One of our primary goals is that we're providing students with mainstream opportunities, that they're not feeling so secluded and pulled out, but that they still feel a part of that high school community. So we've appreciated the partnership that we've had with the high school administration as we have um, embraced those real expectations and are hoping that students will be able to transition out of the program. So um, a referral packet was developed to um, refer students. Um, there can be eight um, students in the program. Mm -hmm. And part of the referral packet requires that the students would have a um, diagnostic DSM assessment completed with a diagnosis recommending um, therapeutic school programming or day treatment, um, and that that diagnostic assessment would be completed within six months of the time that they um, are being considered for the program. And then also current insurance information is a requirement as well. And we are partnering with um, the school-based psychologist and social worker to support in that referral process so that we do have a broad um, scope of identifying students for the program. So the program goals, like D Director McLuhan had mentioned, is to offer a therapeutic educational setting to our resident um, students whose mental health is impairing their academic success in school. And that also, the second goal is to support students in gaining the skills necessary to transition into a mainstream environment. And finally, also to ensure that all students remain on a pathway toward graduation. So in addressing the curriculum, we worked really closely with the Teaching and Learning Department um, and Director Stenvik to identify a curriculum that would really work well for our students. And because the program is open right now to students in grades eight through 12, it's very difficult for one teacher to teach all content areas necessary for each student. And so we are using a curriculum called APEX, which is an online curriculum for students. It's all standards based um, and is really great. We've used it for different um, courses in, in AP in the past, and so it's something that we're familiar with as a district and have had success with. And so that is um, what we're using in Anchor. The teacher has had some extensive training with, with APEX so that she's able to really support students in determining their specific pathway to graduation through credit recovery and then also working ahead with their online classes. The Anchor program also has a modified schedule, so although it's located in the high school, they do operate within their own schedule, and that means shortened academic blocks and then group therapy um, and skills training throughout the school day, so they still hear the bells in the classroom, but they operate within their own within their own schedule, and they are really working to individualize the student needs, so they've been doing a lot more with use of the facilities in the high school, so getting to the fitness center and um, making sure that students aren't just in the same room all day but have the ability to get out and about within the school. 
And then again, with the graduation planning, each student has their individual pathway, and really the goal is that students will get the level of mental health support that they need while still working towards graduation so that they can graduate with their peers. Um, to monitor the progress of the program, um, uh, Director McLoon has worked with the Nexus Family Therapist in the program along with the teacher in the program to schedule weekly meetings to talk about progress on IEP goals, progress academically, and then also progress with therapeutic goals. So then in terms of program evaluation, um, we are looking forward to getting through this first semester so that we have a lot of data to be reviewing as we're looking long term um, in evaluating the program. Right now, as Marsha mentioned, we are meeting weekly, um, spending time reviewing students' um, individual cases, files, um, making sure that we're monitoring their progress within um, their treatment plans with a therapist and then their um, academic work. We also plan to be doing some additional staff and family interviews to gather some more data as the semester goes on and work to do a more longitudinal analysis. Um, with the budget piece, um, I have list where we have listed here just um, the initial startup costs. So you can see there the instructional and non-instructional supplies. And then also just wanting to note that when we do place students in these day treatment or therapeutic school settings, we're paying a range of twenty-five to eighty thousand dollars per student per school year. So the ability for us to offer this type of program within our district to resident students is um, a really fantastic opportunity. And with that partnership with Nexus, we're very excited that we have high level professionals that are able to provide this type of program. And we plan to do some additional work with looking at the, the amounts that we've paid in placement costs over the last several years so that we can utilize that as we're looking at overall program evaluation. So again, with next steps, we're gonna to continue to evaluate the program meeting um, weekly, um, spending time interviewing staff, students, other stakeholders involved, and um, we will continue hopefully to add some more students throughout this semester and as we plan moving into next school year. So at this time, we don't have any governance questions regarding Anchor Program, but we're happy to answer any other questions that you may have. I do have one question. Yes. And then a comment. Um, as far as how long would you expect a student to stay in that program? What is your anticipated amount of time that would be that would serve them well? I know it's going to vary. But yeah, that's a, a difficult question to answer okay. just because it really does vary based okay. on students. Um, we had the opportunity to tour a program in the Centennial District and then have been in contact with other programs nearby here. So it really does vary at this point. Um, it's hard. It is hard to say. Unfortunately, it's just really based on student progress and and their needs, specifically okay. with the mental health piece. But our goal is to be transitioning students back. If they need to be in a program like this for multiple years, then we would have to look at what other options would be. My other um, comment is you mentioned the, um, the cost savings that we'll have as a result of having this program. But I just want to say you know, kudos to everyone that's been involved in planning this because as far as from the student's um, point of view, you know, just to have that consistency about building and not having to leave and go somewhere else, I think that's mm -hmm. gonna be really good for a lot of these kids in the long run, so thank you all. Mm -hmm. Just a comment on that too, that's really what we heard from families when we did all of the um, first meetings before the program opened. Those were the comments that we got from the families. Very thankful that the program was right here in the district, so thank you for supporting that. And just to add on to that, the therapist is able to do family therapy with um, the students and their families, and so the ability for it to be so local is wonderful, and so we're hoping that that will open up a lot of additional support for students. Um, how much do you expect the insurance payments to offset the cost, the placement costs? As far as the billing, the um, Nexus organization is taking care of all of the therapeutic side of billing, and so it, it's about half of the school day is, is spent doing the therapy and the skills, and then the other half would be the educational programming. So um, they're working with the insurance companies, and um, Nexus is pretty committed to continuing to work with us based on the number of students that we have and how they're able to bill for that. Okay, so if a student does not have insurance, is there, are there grants or some kind of subsidies or something to cover or they just won't be in the program? 
That's something that we would work with case by case. I know that Marsha has done a lot of work in the past um, connecting students and our school social workers with different resources so that they are able to obtain an insurance. And so that's something that we would really help a family navigate through if we do think that they're a strong candidate for the program. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> okay, thank right. you. Thank you. Keep us posted. Uh, Minnesota Student Survey. We got. Good evening, Chair Larkin, members of the school board, and Superintendent Kathy Kelly. Um, I am so pleased to be here tonight with Disa Fabeck. Uh, many of you have met her, um, and some of you may not have. So Disa is our research and assessment coordinator. Um, so in addition to coordinating um, testing and assessment, she also is coordinating gifted programs, K-12, that includes advanced placement. Um, she's an AP scholar herself. <laughs> uh, in addition, um, Disa comes to us with high school teaching experience in the sciences. She also has higher ed experience, and she speaks Chinese, so <laughs> what can I say? Uh, this evening, we're here to present um, an informational update on the Minnesota Student Survey. Um, Following our mission to create worlds of opportunity for every learner, the student survey provides us with information that allows us to do that. Uh, the core values of focus this evening are integration, respect, or in integrity, excuse me, respect and courage. Uh, good evening, Chair Larkin, Superintendent Kelly, members of the board. It's nice to be here and meet some of you. Um, the Minnesota Student Survey is a really valuable resource and it's given every three years by the state and it gives us a lot of information about the mental health, uh, safety, academic success um, of our students and so it's really valuable for us and we as the school district are going to talk about how we're using it and a lot of other local organizations use it as well, county and state agencies, community organizations, and it really helps us understand from our students' perspective how they're feeling and not necessarily the staff's perspective, so it's really beneficial. So a little bit more information about it. it it's given to students, like I said, every three years, and it has been since 19... 89 responses are anonymous for our students and they are optional, although we highly encourage it. And then it's often given, or almost always, grades five, eight, nine, and 11. And I say almost always because sometimes the questions are not appropriate for the fifth graders that we'd ask 11th and 9th graders. So as you can see, the survey covers a variety of topics and categories. Um, from family relationships to risk factors to substance abuse, health and safety. Um, so here is a list of all of the categories. Um, so in the year 2016, we had a large majority of 5th, 8th, and 11th grade students. Um, about half of our 9th grade students chose to take it, and um, upon some investigation, there were, there were some glitches with the system that day um, when they were taking it. So uh, we have a, as we move forward to show some data, we're just going to keep that in mind, the, what the percentages are. So I'm going to show you a sample, 14 samples, in fact, of data. Now, this is a large um, survey. There's a lot of data. We could have pulled hundreds of different data points. Um, so um, before I move forward to show you the 14 different slides, I just want to explain all of this data that's on the chart and what, what it'll look like. Again, this is all made up. This particular slide is all made up data, OK? <laughs> just as an example. So as we're looking at all of the colors and graphs and numbers on this um, chart, you'll see um, between the black lines, if you look all the way to the bottom, that's the data set for fifth grade and then moving to the right, eighth grade, ninth grade, and 11th grade. And then the clusters of columns are, and it's labeled at the bottom, CH 2013, that's Columbia Heights students reporting in 2013. Then moving over to the next cluster of columns, that is um, Columbia Heights students in the spring of 2016 and what they, how they answered the survey. And then the far right cluster within each of the subgroups um, is Minnesota 2016. So that's how students across the state of Minnesota um, responded to the survey. And then along the bottom, the different colors will um, 
explain what the response options were. So in this example, rarely or never, sometimes, often or very often. So we're gonna be presenting a lot of data to you and after each um, group of data points, we'll be um, sharing some conclusions with you. So again, this is not real data, um, this is an example. So based on the previous slide, fewer Columbia Heights students reported very often from uh, 2013 to 2016 at all grade levels. And then another conclusion from the sample slide is that more fifth and ninth graders in Columbia Heights reported rarely or never as compared to the state of Minnesota. So do you have any questions before I begin with the real data? Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna start with the category of health. Um, and again, these categories are given by the state of Minnesota. So this first question is, during a typical school night, how many hours of sleep do you get? We should be asking this of the adults too, right? <laughs> um, so as you can see, um, looking at the gray bar, so that's the option of 10 or more hours, um, you can see that fifth graders are getting more hours of sleep um, than the older grades. And then just um, looking at the orange bar, you can see across the grade levels and the years and the state of Minnesota, the majority of students are reporting that they are getting um, seven to nine hours of sleep per night. So the next question is, how would you describe your health in general? And here again, you can see the options are fair or poor, good, um, very good and excellent in the gray. And again, across, um, across the grade levels and the years in the state of Minnesota, in the gray bars there, the majority of students are reporting very good or excellent. So another slide. Have you had sexual intercourse? Now, of course, this question is asked of ninth graders and 11th graders and not the younger kiddos. Um, so here you can see that in ninth grade there was an increase from in the blue Columbia Heights students from 2013 to 2016. Um, and you can see Columbia Heights students reporting a decrease in grade 11. <coughs> and our last slide for health category. During the last seven days, on how many days were you physically active for a total of at least 60 minutes per day? So here across, the options are never or once in the blue, weekly or daily. So you can see where the vast majority of students are saying weekly or daily. And just drawing some conclusions um, from the health category, you can see 16.2% of fifth graders in Columbia Heights reported that they're getting four to six hours of sleep. Um, so that's, we're saying that's too few hours of sleep in 2016, and 9.9 .9 of fifth graders are across the state of Minnesota reported four to six hours of sleep. So part of the drawing conclusions is how can we take that data and what, how does it impli um, have implications for curriculum, lessons, communication, and just um, general education in the topics. Um, more conclusions, Columbia Heights students report feeling healthy at a slightly lower rate than the state. <coughs> so again, we can partner with our community and um, different departments in the district to see how to address some of these issues. Sexual activity has slightly decreased for 11th grade students and slightly increased for 9th grade students in the last three years. All grades in Columbia Heights reported physical activity one to four days per week at a higher rate than the rest of the state of Minnesota. And daily activity increased in fifth grade students only over the last three years for Columbia Heights students. So let's take a look at the school. So next we'll look at the school category. And again, this is a sampling of the questions asked in the school category. There's quite a few. Uh, the first one is, during the last 30 days, how often have you been bullied through email, chat rooms, instant messaging, websites, or texting, so cyberbullying. And you can see a nice trend here with our never or once in the blue. That's overwhelming majority of our students reporting this and throughout the state. And then weekly is in the orange and daily is in the gray. So when comparing to the state, it's always nice to see that 2016 uh, Columbia Heights Public Schools versus the state and see where we're having slight increases and slight decreases. Next question, during the last 30 days, how often have other students bullied or harassed you for your race, ethnicity, or national origin? 
And in this, we see just slightly higher than the state averages for all of our age groups of saying um, once or twice weekly or daily. The next school category question, at my school, teachers care about me. And this one was the percent of students who strongly agreed or agreed. And so we can see some <coughs> uh, upward trends, some increases in ninth and 11th grade from 2013 compared to this past school year, 2016. Uh, the question of I feel safe at school. So they had quite a few options on this one. So looking at the strongly agree, agree. And that's in the blue and the orange. And we'll draw more conclusions too at the end here. Um, how often do you care about doing well in school? And this one, uh, if you look at the fifth grade response and the 11th grade response, we see an increase in the all or most of the time in the blue. So really promoting that doing well growth mindset coming through. And so in this school category, thinking about the higher percentages of Columbia Heights Public School students report feeling safe and cared about at school. Very low percentages of students report bullying or harassment. And there's always room for improvement on this, especially on the cyber end of things that can be, as we've heard, a very easy platform for a lot of people to air their feelings. And so kind of drawing that out and talking to our students about that, you know, before you post, think about these things. Uh, Columbia Heights has a bullying policy and anti-bullying practices, and we see it on posters throughout all of the schools. And also, uh, Columbia Heights students report caring more about school as they get older uh, when compared to the state. I'll just add that as we um, increase personalized learning throughout the district at the different grade levels, um, we're very intentional. Um, we have something called Tech Week, which is an entire week of um, lessons to, that all of the students receive on how to be safe, smart, and kind online, right? How to use the tools um, appropriately. Um, and so we wanted to include this data point because we do have a lot of devices out in the district now and we wanted to see are, are there overwhelmingly increasing um, levels of cyberbullying and um, we didn't see um, a huge increase with the addition of the personalized learning. And so the teachers um, and the administrators work really hard to um, along with um, the technology department to ensure that kids are aware um, and that there's um, that they know that we're uh, cognizant of it and watching it. So moving to family relationships. So this question is, how much do you feel your parents care about you? And here you can see um, the dark blue very much. And then uh, the trend goes from there to quite a bit and then barely visible, some a little and not at all um, in the single digit percentages. So drawing conclusions from the family and relationships question, Columbia Heights students report feeling cared about by parents at a higher rate than the state in grades five and nine. And then you saw the, the difference between the dark blue and all of the rest of the categories. So overwhelmingly, kids are reporting that they feel cared about at home. I'm not sure how, transitioning from a wonderful caring at home to substance abuse, sorry. Uh, during the last 12 months, how many occasions have you had an alcoholic beverage? So, um, so again, never is the light blue, the tall blue um, bars there to once in the orange, and then it gets lower from there in gray about six times, once a month, or more than twice a month. Um, and so again, this was asked of kids in grade eight, nine, and 11. Um, so, of course, we take this issue very seriously in Columbia Heights Public Schools. Um, we notice, looking at the data, that the teen alcohol consumption in Columbia Heights is comparable to the rest of the state of Minnesota. Um, we do teach lessons on the dangers of substance abuse uh, in elementary schools and also in health classes in the middle and high school. Also, um, this, the high school has um, Alcohol Awareness Week, the week connected to prom, um, and you can see you can see that's very visible in the community every year. And then, of course, we have a chemical health specialist on staff and other student support specialists. So 
So tying into that, mental health is the next category. And this question was, I say no to things that are dangerous or unhealthy. And so a little double negative there. So I say no. So looking at the yellow as being the positive. So I extremely often say no. This gets a little bit ambiguous when you look at it at first. And so the blue on the far left would be that these students are choosing to say yes to dangerous things. And if you look at fifth grade, we see kind of this higher blue bar. And uh, thinking about a fifth grader mindset, what is their dangerous or unhealthy thing that they're thinking of versus a ninth or 11th grader? But a positive trend for most of the um, 2013 to 2016 for Columbia Heights. Another question in this category, I accept people who are different than me. And we see a pretty nice bump in 11th grade there from 2013 to 2016. And so drawing conclusions from that, the 11th graders at Columbia Heights report half the amount of unhealthy behaviors, whereas Columbia Heights 5th and 9th graders report double compared to the state of Minnesota. All right, this is our last category. I've got one more data slide for you. Uh, the question was, when you spend time doing activities outside of the regular school day, how often do you learn skills like teamwork or leadership? And you'll note that um, the 2013 data was not available from the Minnesota Department of Education. So just viewing um, great, uh, the year 2016 for Columbia Heights and the state of Minnesota, uh, rarely, sometimes, often, or very often. So from that data, we can see that less than 20% of Columbia Heights 8th and 9th graders report learning teamwork specifically and leadership skills specifically outside of school, whereas the 11th graders report very often at a much higher rate than the rest of the state. Um, so that gives us pause and think, has us think about what are the things that we're already doing and what are the um, partnerships that we could expand and enhance. So for example, in Columbia Heights, students have the opportunity to participate in 4-H, Key Club through the Kiwanis, the National Honor Society, AVID, um, our city offer, uh, park and rec department offers a lot of different activities for students to participate in. The Columbia Heights Police Department sponsors both soccer and basketball um, for students here at the Highlander Center. Um, so we see students here into the evening working um, with the College Possible folks here at the high school. Um, and then of course a robust athletics activities department and then other opportunities. So how are we going to use all of this data? Um, so we use the data to inform curriculum we, that's um, not only is that the different content, specific content areas, but also our social emotional curriculum. So for example, responsive classroom, um, trauma informed instruction, all of those pieces. Um, this data helps guide the work of the student support staff. So that includes our chemical health specialists, social workers, school psychologists. Um, it informs our professional development. This gives us an area of wh what are the needs that the kids have and what can we um, do to help train our staff. And then it also helps us, as I mentioned before, to enhance our student offerings. So again, this was an informational update. We won't be bringing a governance question, but if you have other questions. Um, I, do, I do have a question. Um, the way I understand it, um, the full survey is available online. That's correct. Is that accessible mm -hmm. to? Uh, the general public? Yes. And where would they locate that? It's on the Minnesota Department of Education website under the Minnesota Student Survey. So for people that really, really like data and to dive into it, it's all right there. It's okay. a lot of data. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyone else questions or comments? Thanks for the update. Great. Thank you. Have a good night. <clears throat> okay, we're going to move on to our action items. First up is the 2017-2018 school calendar. <clears throat> Hello again, Chair Larkin, members of the board, Superintendent Kelly. Um, Principal DeWitt and I are here tonight um, to bring forward the 2017-18 school calendar. Just as a reminder, this was brought as an information item to the school board meeting on February 14th. 
Um, the process entailed a very comprehensive committee, including representatives from each building as well as parents. There was a lot of general consensus surrounding the calendar, and it also is very similar to sur the calendars of surrounding districts. So we are here tonight seeking approval of the 2017-18 school calendar. We start with a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Molly. Second. Laura. Discussion. <coughs> Just real quickly, who all's involved with putting the calendar together more for the general <coughs> public so they don't think that you're just coming up here and saying this is what yes. we're going to do? There's a lot of input that goes into it the way yes, I Yes, we, we have um, teachers from every, every building, um, administration from all levels, parents from every level. We this year had great representation from our parents and extensive input also from parents, which was exceptional, especially at the high school level. Um, we really take into account um, really the, the terms, making sure that we have equal semesters, um, equal quarters. So there are lots of people around the table, lots of input. Um, we also look at a, a calendar that's conducive to our families. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Discussion, questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, achievement and integration. <clears throat> Chair Larkin, members of the board, Superintendent Kelly, um, on February 14th, I presented information on the achievement and integration plan and budget. So this evening, I'll be bringing forward the governance question to approve the Columbia Heights Public Schools Achievement and Integration Plan and Budget. As a reminder, the purpose of achievement and integration for Minnesota uh, is to pursue racial and economic integration, increase student achievement, create equitable educational opportunities, and reduce academic disparities based on students' diverse racial, ethnic, and economic backgrounds. The plan um, includes, um, can include, innovative and integrative, integrated learning environments, family engagement, professional development, college and career readiness, recruitment and retention of racially diverse staff, and equitable access to effective teachers. Uh, just as a reminder, it must align to the five areas of the world's best workforce. And, um, Looking at the budget allocation um, this week on February 21st, last week on February 21st, luckily Director Holmgren um, was reviewing the allotment. So the, uh, the, what was presented on the 14th was the estimate from the Department of Education and then on the 21st it was updated. So these numbers are slightly lower than what was presented on the 14th. Um, but as you'll see, um, one of the requirements is that the student programming, the direct student services portion of the grant must be at a minimum of 80%. 80 per, 80 so um, we try to you know, give as much as we can and the support of our direct, directly to students. So 87% will be going towards um, student support and then 13% of the combination of professional development and administrative and that one of course is not to exceed 20%. So we have three goals. Um, goal one is to increase access and opportunity to academic programming, and we'll measure that by reading and math MCA scores. Goal two is to decrease achievement gaps, and again, that will be measured by the reductions of gaps um, on MCA scores. And goal three, this is that incentive revenue, um, which is um, provided if, if approved, provided for our work that we do, that we collaborate with the School District of St. Anthony, New Brighton. And some of the strategies that um, we plan to, that are included in the goal, or in the plan, are AVID, early college, intervention programs, educational equity, well-rounded education per the new Every Student Succeeds Act, uh, and family engagement. So a lot of the um, 
the majority of the funding goes to offset the cost, the staffing costs, so staff salary and benefits, to in order to run the program. So, for example, with the early college program, if a teacher is teaching um, a portion of their day is teaching an early college class, then we would be able to offset a portion of their of their costs with this grant, so that thereby helping the general fund. So, I bring forward tonight um, the governance question of approving the Columbia Heights Public Schools Achievement and Integration Plan and Budget. I start with a motion. So moved. Laura. Second. Molly. Discussion. Questions, comments. Can you switch back to that slide? I think it was goal three or something, the one with St. Anthony Schools. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. wanted to read that. Oh, okay. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thanks, Zena. Thanks. Uh, next up is the curriculum cycle. Okay, so again, the curriculum cycle was presented on February 14th, 2017. Um, as part of creating worlds of opportunity for every student's our mission and really focusing on excellence, collaboration, and innovation. Uh, the governance question for you this evening is the approval of the Columbia Heights Public Schools curriculum cycle for 2016 to 2023. Um, so of course, this is part of the Minnesota statute, 120B.11, and part of our strategic, Columbia Heights strategic plan. The cycle here is, is depicted here for you, and it was previously enclosed um, on February 14. So you can see the whole process and how we're able to support um, curricular teams through study and preparation, program design, implementation, um, and then refining and sustaining, monitoring the progress of, of the curriculum. So with that, I ask the governance question to approve the Columbia Heights Public Schools curriculum cycle for 2016-2023. I could get a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Paula? Second. Gloria? Discussion, questions, comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, next up is Community Education Adventure Club, Mini Adventure Club fees. Good evening, Chair Larkin, members of the school board, Superintendent Kelly. Uh, Director Holmgren and I come this evening to you with the governance question of approving the increase of the fees for Adventure Club and Mini Adventures. We always start off with our mission of creating worlds of opportunity for every learner, and in this case, it includes the child care programs for Columbia Heights Public Schools. And in terms of the value, the core values, uh, this refers to community because we do provide this child care program for our community members and also integrity in terms of it being fiscally, having the fiscal integrity of covering its cost. A reminder of the increase for Mini Adventures Preschool Child Care Program. It is between a 2.5 and 3% increase. This increase is reflective of the increased cost. Um, to run the program. This program must cover its cost. You'll see the comparison of the 2016-2017 fees and our proposed 2017-2018 fees for Mini Adventures. This is our preschool child care program open 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Adventure Club, which is our after-school care, non-school days, and also our summer programming you'll see the increase again, two and a half to 3% increase simply to cover the cost of the program. And a reminder that the fees include all of the meals and snacks, field trip cost, curriculum program supervision, that Mini Adventures is a four star parent aware rated program. There are a number of activities that are provided to the students and there are fee assistance available for eligible families through Pathways 1 and Pathways 2 scholarships for Mini Adventures and also through the county child care assistance programs. 
So this evening, the governance question being brought forward is the approval of the increase in Mini Adventures and Adventure Club child care fees. Okay, thank you. Motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Laura? Second. Molly, second. Thank you. Discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next up will be the uh, window bids. Bill? Yeah, as we talked about a couple weeks ago, um, we're looking at uh, replacing all the, well, the remainder of the windows at the Columbia Academy, which is like 80% of them. Um, so you see some larger dollars here, but we're very pleased with the bid that we received from TMG Construction. You can see um, on the numbers that I uh, put in your packet that we actually had a pretty wide range of costs. Um, but tonight I'd ask you to uh, approve a contract to TMG construction for 360000 Okay, we'll start with a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Lorian? Second. Hala, thank you. Discussion? Have you used this company before? There. Actually, no, this is, a, this is a different company we have not used in the past, but working with Inspect, they do have experience working with uh, this company, and they don't have any um, reservations whatsoever. Can you remind us what the budget was for this project? Uh, this budget actually was at 450000 so I feel very pleased that we've saved some money somewhere in the budget going forward. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Yep, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Yep. Well, you're still good to stay up here. Uh, high school HVAC system. Is yeah, now, um, last week we talked about the HVAC system. Um, tonight I bring forward that we um, worked with that, the with this uh, contractor, and uh, we were a little disappointed with the where these came in, but we did have the budget set at right 500000 You see that our lowest bid is at 498880 so we're right at that $500,000 mark, so we're within our budget. So I would um, recommend that we go ahead and go forward with this HVAC system uh, for the high school and give the uh, contractor Horwitz um, construction. Okay. Uh, motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Molly? Second. Second by Lorian. Uh, discussion, questions, comments? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Yep. Thank you very much. So, uh, next up, board topics. Anybody have anything for board topics this evening? I would just mention again that there is a choir concert on Monday night. I would encourage you to come out the high school choir. So if you have the opportunity, come on by. There are no other board topics, and we will adjourn this meeting at 8.17.